From Hollywood, the entertainment capital of the world, it's right now with Jimmy Pardo. Now here's your host, Jimmy Pardo. Yeah, yeah, hey everybody, yes, why not, right? Welcome to Right Now. Uh, I'm wearing a Thin Lizzy t-shirt, if that's what we're wondering at home. Yeah, the boys are back in town. Dan, certainly you remember that time over at Johnny's place? That chick got up and she slapped Johnny's face. Man, we just fell about the place. He's having a stroke. Chick don't want to What'd you say? I said he's having a stroke. I, uh, I was uh, reciting uh, the only lyrics I know from that song uh, for no reason whatsoever. I'm wearing this shirt, maybe ironically. Uh, this gentleman currently writes on the league. Dan O'Keefe, everybody. <laughs> blam, 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 blam. Uh, this young lady writes for Conan, Lori Kilmartin. Uh, oh boy, look who it is. Look who's down there, huh? Boris Hamilton, everybody. How you doing, Boris? I'm good, Jimmy. How are you? I'm doing very well. All I, right. I, I, just because you asked, those cupcakes, props. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you looking for over there? Just low-fat granola. Huh? <laughs> Have you ever done exercise ever? <laughs> That's right for you the way. Yes. Oh, I'm a fan. Boris, he, uh, he likes to frequent the tiki clubs, right? Isn't that a, a hobby of yours? I, I like rum drinks. You like a rum drink from time to time. And you, you drink them out of a coconut? What do you do? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes out of a little ceramic god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan, and I'm alone. Um, what happened? What happened? That's the truth. Nobody cares for you. Here's the thing. Uh, welcome to Right Now. Here's what's going to happen. I'm about to ring out a comedian who's going to do some standing-up comedy for you. While they are performing, these three terrific writers from Televisión are going to write me jokes in the moment, on the fly, based on the set they just saw. I will then grab those cards, read the jokes from them, unedited, cold red. That can't be proper English. <laughs> I will read them coldly. Hmm. No, that kind of describes the way I'm going to read them. Uh, listen, I don't know adverbs or adjectives. What I do know is I'm going to grab those cards and read them for the first time ever and try not to mangle them like I just did that last two sentences. <laughs> those last two sentences. <laughs> that chick don't want to know, forget her! <laughs> While I read these, I'm going to be looking for the joke of the night, and whoever wrote it is going to get a crisp $50 bill! Tell you in advance, in tens and fives. Um, so that said, let's meet our comedian. This gentleman's a very funny man. Uh, he comes to us from Canada. You can check out his EP on Comedy Records. John Shovel, everybody. John Shovel. Hey, John. Hey, Ken. How are we doing, guys? Uh, I just moved here from Canada, as Jimmy said. Good, so you guys have heard of it. That's good. Uh, <laughs> uh, I moved here with my girlfriend, and uh, we moved into uh, low-income housing. Uh, anyone else from low-income housing? Just the ladies. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, if you are not familiar with it, it's a haunted house all year round. It's frightening. Frightening. Uh, there's two signs in the building that like are just literal signs that you should not be living here. The first one in the lobby, we just have a big plaque that says... Uh, no room for racism. <laughs> you know when you're in a nice building and you don't have to tell people to stop being <laughs> openly racist in the hallway? That's the America I want to live in. Like, you can't have, like, an application interview with someone and they've said Chinaman five times <laughs> and under references they put, I hate those Portugueses. <laughs> and you're like, well, you don't have any pets, and your credit score is real good, so welcome aboard. Thanks. Here's the keys to your palace of hate. That's not allowed. Um, in, in the parking garage, the second sign that we shouldn't be living there is a sign in our parking spot on the wall that says, check your back seat before you leave. 
<laughs> how many times does that have to happen before you put up a sign? <laughs> because you better believe I check my back seat every single time. <laughs> because there's no way you put that up on a whim. <laughs> that is a specially made sign. I want to get a specialized plaque for the parking garage, though, that says, plenty of room for racism down here in the garage. <laughs> Keep our racists with all of our methane gases. <laughs> uh, I, before I left Canada, uh, it was my sister's birthday, so we had like a big going away party and like birthday party sort of thing. And uh, my dad, we were uh, in my sister's old room, my dad and I, and he told me, you know, he's like, I'm gonna miss you, and it's not gonna be the same here without you sort of thing, it was really nice. I think his exact words were, um, help me move this bullshit bed up to the attic. <laughs> but I knew what he meant, you know? <laughs> I knew what he meant, could feel it. And so, so I'm helping him move this bed to the attic, and we lift up the mattress, and then we lift up the plywood, because box springs, those are for rich people, am I right, guys? <laughs> So we lift up this plywood, and my sister had gone on her back and written, like, handwritten all this stuff on the bottom of it in markers, like some sort of weird wooden diary or something like that. <laughs> She's like the Anne Frank of under the bed, I guess. Yeah. So we're reading all this weird stuff, and then in the bottom corner, my dad and I look at this thing, and it says, hot black guys wanted. <laughs> mm. Apparently there's no room for racism under the bed either, so that's, it's nice. Just to put it into perspective, my sister was 11 when she stopped using the bed. When I was 11, I wanted a bike. And I only wanted one bike. And I wasn't too picky on the color, to be honest with you. <laughs> so I thought it would be funny uh, in her birthday card to write, uh, Good luck nailing all those black guys without the proper support of a box spring mattress. <laughs> Nobody found that uncomfortable as, <laughs> as uncomfortable as my sister's white boyfriend. <laughs> and I'll tell you, nobody wanted chocolate cake after that. <laughs> guys, I've been John Chavo. Thank you so much. Jimmy Pardo, everybody. Great job, John. Thanks, man. Thanks for being here. We got it. I got it. I got it. John Chavo, guys. John Chavo. John Chavo. John Jobble, John Jobble, 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 John Jobble, John Jobble. Dad O'Keefe has him. I've got Laura Kilmartin and I got Maurice Hamilton. Uh, I'm curious, how big is your girlfriend's penis? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to America. Sorry, our border patrol kept your hair. <laughs> oh. We've got an hour in the running. Keep it up! Nothing hits harder than a white guy talking about racism. <laughs> You're like the Anne Frank of this show. <laughs> That's, is that you, Danny? Who is that, Lori? Nice piece of business from Miss Kilmartin. Uh, you heard the word Chinaman five times. Are you trying to get a job at Jimmy Pardo's house? <laughs> That's my house. I hire the Chinese. All the Orientals are welcome. <laughs> you know Cold Red was a movie I did with Patrick Swayze and Eric Roberts. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Josh Swayze? You know, Cold Red was a movie I did with Patrick Swayze and Eric Roberts. I don't get it. You said Cold Red earlier in their monologue or your opening. Oh, I said Cold Red, and that was a movie I did with, I see, I see. You know what, Boris? It's, you know what, it stinks. Just drop it. Just let it go. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't know how to. Like, they won't just leave my hand. open your hand and drop awful. it. It's just awful. Oh, it's not that awful. Wanna, do you want me to read it to you? Take out Eric Roberts and put in Jake Busey. Now, All right, here we go. Hold it up to his face. Make him look at it. Look right. the heck? That's not a bad idea, Dan. Look, look, what, you look what you did. You know Cold Red was a movie I did with Patrick Swayze and who? Eric. And, and Jake Busey. Jake. I'm sorry. 
Was that so hard? Hey, get back here. There's two underneath it. What? You dropped two. Did I really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Shlemiel Shnabel, if that chick don't want to know, forget her. <laughs> it, it's like you're going out of your way. <laughs> <laughs> Is it racist if I don't want to be in the same room with John's four-inch pant cuffs? <laughs> Racism in the garage because the valet parkers are immigrants? Is that how it works? <laughs> no room for racism, plenty of room for jokes. <laughs> Is that you? Yeah! You're back! You're back! I'm gonna put that, no, and Frank would have to beat that. No way, like pie, there's always room for racism. <laughs> I'd expected more on that, Dan. Don't give up on me, sir. I'm not going to. That was a, that was a good piece of business. Uh, I wish you used props in your act so I'd have something to beat you to death with. <laughs> Is that wrong? Is that wrong to say? <laughs> I wish you used props so I'd have something to beat you to death. Lori, I'm sorry. It's all right, I understand. Yeah, that's going to beat Anne Frank. <laughs> so did the Nazis. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shabal, Jewish name, then why aren't you funny? <laughs> the beard looks like a Muppet version of the alien face hugger. What? <laughs> That beard looks like a Muppet version of the alien. Face hugger is raping your chin, but fantasizing about a different chin. <laughs> I'm gonna read that cleanly. That beard looks like a Muppet version of the alien. Face hugger is raping, what the fuck? Is there supposed to be a period there? Do yeah. I, am I, is it, is it the alien face hugger? Yeah. The face hugger from Alien, the alien face hugger? The alien face hugger. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> hey, here we go. It'll be low income housing for you till you write a better act. <laughs> you Canuck shit stick. I th damn it, every part that I think is gonna get the laugh gets nothing. You look like a police sketch connected to an amber alert. <laughs> but sound like the child he abducted. <laughs> Yeah, man. You know what? I'm going to give it to beat you to death. I'm going to give it to beat you to death. That means Dan O'Keefe gets the 50 bucks. Here we go. Let's do it, Joker's Wild Style. Here we go. Hand out. 10, 20, 30, 35. Well, 30. 45, 50. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Here's what just happened. I was looking at the bills and yet still went to 35. <laughs> Saw it was a 10, still went to 35. That's not how it works. Not in this game. No, sir. <laughs> not on my watch! <laughs> End of watch. In your local theaters. <laughs> hey, another hand for John Schauble, everybody. Don't forget to check us out at uh, my award-winning podcast, Never Not Funny, over at podcast.com. <laughs> but before that, a big hand for these great writers, Boris Hamilton, Lori Kilmartin, Dan O'Keefe. <laughs> this guy's name is Jimmy Pardo. We'll see you next time on Right Now. <laughs>